দর্শক সম্প্রতি বাংলাদেশ সফর করেন লিবারাল আর্টস বিষয়ে আমেরিকার সেরা দশ কলেজের অন্যতম খালটন কলেজের অর্থনীতি বিভাগের তার শিক্ষার্থী বাংলাদেশে অবস্থানকালীন বিভিন্ন প্রতিষ্ঠানের শিক্ষার্থীদের সাথে মত বিনিময়ের পাশাপাশি বিভিন্ন উন্নয়নমূলক কর্মকাণ্ডের সাক্ষীও হয়েছেন তারা সেখানকার অভিজ্ঞতা এবং বাংলাদেশ নিয়ে ভাবনা সম্পর্কে জানবো আজকের ফোর্থ রাইটে আপনাদের সঙ্গে আছে আমি সৈয়দ আশিক রহমান আর আলোচনা জানার জন্য স্টুডিওতে উপস্থিত রয়েছেন ঢাকায় মার্কিন দূতাবাসের পাবলিক অ্যাফেয়ার্স কাউন্সিলর স্টিভেন এবলি সর্বসান্ডা খালটন কলেজের ইকোনমিক বিভাগের সহযোগী অধ্যাপক ফয়েজ ভুইয়া আসসালামু আলাইকুম খালটন কলেজের শিক্ষার্থী ক্যামেরন ডারবো আসসালামু আলাইকুম এবং লিবি রোল্যান্ড আসসালামু আলাইকুম ভেরি ওয়েলকাম অল অফ ইউ এট আরটিডি স্টুডিও ওয়েল থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ সো মাচ Thank you. It's an, our pleasure that you are here. And uh, let's start with Professor Bhuya. Well, uh, Professor Bhuya, could you provide insights into Carlton College ongoing program in Bangladesh? First of all, Carlton College is a liberal arts college in a small town called Northfield in Minnesota. Uh, it's known for being very cold, but it's okay. It's not that cold. Probably what, like negative 20 degrees right now or something like that? That's cold. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's very light cold. Yeah, it's light cold. Light cold. Yeah. Like light jacket will we'll cut it. Very light cold. Uh, so these are students who are all interested in economic development. Uh, oh. Not all of them are going to be economics major, but oh, a good whoa. portion of them. Very good subject. Well, serious subject. Oh, I love it. Yep. Uh, people just need to realize that. Exactly. It's great, right? Uh, and basically, they took a course with me uh, at Carleton about economic development, learning about Uh, why do countries grow uh, from low income to middle income to high income? Uh, how do people whose income is low, how do they make decisions about migration, about children, about uh, taking credit? But it's one thing to learn things in classroom, and it's quite another thing to see it in person, right? Uh, so what they do, what we do under this program is they come to Bangladesh for roughly two weeks. So we call it a off-campus winter break. Yeah, so they're here for two weeks. And during these two weeks, they will go, you know, meet with different nonprofit uh, oh. and different development organizations. So, for example, uh, we've met with folks from Bidyanando, Jago, BRAC, USAID, uh, wow. the U.S. Embassy, and also BRAC. Uh, and then we go back to uh, Northfield, well. and then we try to make sense of what we saw in Bangladesh and what we read in the books. Right. Right. So it's very much about experiential learning. It's very much about questioning what the textbooks are saying, right? Wow. And uh, what we do when we go back is we share our findings with the community, with the Carleton community. Wow. And we will also kind of try and make sense of which assumptions in these models are not correct. Great. So. Thank you. Thank you from, uh, to get talk from you. Well, I'll give a question uh, to Cameron and Libby. And the same question, actually, I want to uh, give you first. Cameron. Mr. Cameron. How has your experience in Bangladesh, particularly through the off-campus study program, come on? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly been truly wonderful. Uh, as our professor has been saying pretty much throughout the last few months, Bangladesh is really one of the best places to study development. I mean, the NGO scene here is just fantastic. BRAC, Grameen, Jago, Vidyanando. Um, these are some of like the biggest and most um, impactful, especially BRAC and Grameen uh, NGOs in the world, and they all started here. Well, um, and so it's fantastic. Obviously, the economy is growing really fast as well. I think it's one of the fastest growing economies in the world right now. Yeah. And so that is just, it's very clear to see right in Dhaka City, you see right. all the hustle and bustle, and there's new construction going on everywhere. So a lot of construction going on. That's yeah. It's a high brand city. There right? is a lot of construction. And I mean, people here have been so welcoming and accommodating to us, so that has been fantastic. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And leave it on. It's been great. Like Cameron said, it's one of the best places to study development. Um, we've really gotten to see a lot of the models that we studied in class in action in Bangladesh and getting to talk to people here has been amazing to wow. help us see if those people are like following what the models say. Are, are their lives included wow. in those models or is there a different story that isn't being told by the models that we want to uncover? Good. Well, Mr. Stephen. Yes, sir. What are the primary objective of this exchange program? Thanks, Ashik. And it's wonderful to be here. Shobhoshanda. Shobhoshanda. Kemanachan. 
Wonderful. You speak good in no, Bengali, not I English. Teach you, teach you Bangla, Bangla Jai. We're really invested in exchanges. Well, we started in 1972. 1972. Uh, with the birth of, of Bangladesh. In right, fact, exactly. In fact, one of the most famous of, our, of, of the alumni exchanges is Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who attended a, a program. But Wonderful. there are many, many, many folks uh, that have done that. Speakers of parliament, winners of the Ramon Make Say Say Award, for example. Max says, yeah. um, and we really focus on trying to build the next generation of leaders investing in people, well, capacity building, teaching well, leadership, women's empowerment, disability inclusiveness. And so our alumni work on many, many different things. And there are many programs that they do take to the states. And why do we do this? It's because of promoting those ties at the most basic level, people to people. This well, is really where you can affect change. This is why you see Carlton here um, visiting Bangladesh to get that real experience that experiential uh, experience. So he, he have uh, experience uh, to work with the disability and autism as well? Yeah, we work with all different alumni because alumni go on these exchange programs for different reasons. Right. Whether it's women's empowerment, whether it's disability inclusiveness, right. whether it's um, the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, which right. is a program that we have here, which is, again is very experiential because we believe in this as well. When you get that kind of experience, when you go to the United States, when you experience those one-on-one -on -one classes, when you experience those visits, you learn a lot about the United States, you learn a lot about Bangladesh, and you learn a lot about the relationship. Well, Stephen, what is your finding? Can you provide an overview of the current U.S. Embassy Exchange Program here in Bangladesh? Well, as I said, Ashik, we've been at this for 50 years. And so we have over 6,500 alumni. Because again, we have been investing, this is a long-term investment between the United States and Bangladesh. Well, and so we have the Fulbright program. Wonderful. Over 1,500 people have participated in the Fulbright program. Actually, 700. Uh, another program, the International Visitorship Leadership Program, that has been 1,500 folks. 1,500? 1,500 folks since 1972. There's a wonderful... But your Fulbright program, the participation was already 700. It has been 700 since 1972. 19, since 1972. And Wonderful. it ranges from ages. You know, we have sort of very senior kind of professors go on Fulbrights. Um, on the other side of the spectrum with our YES program, over 450 high school students have gone to American high schools and experienced American high schools. I think Libby and Cameron aren't too far away from there sort of American high school experience. Professor Huya, what key reasons have you and your students gleaned from field visits? What is your uh, findings? There are so many, so it's, it's actually very difficult to bring it down to a few. But I'm an economist, so uh, one of the first things I always try to teach all my students, and just humans and people in general, right. is trade-offs, right? We all want everything. We want Bangladesh to go from its current development status to that of U.S. and surpass that, right? But it takes time and res resources are limited. Definitely. So there are trade-offs. So for example, the different schools that we've been visiting, there's been certain schools where the quality of education is great, right. but then scaling that project is difficult. But then you had projects where it's scaling is easy, but the quality of education is not as much. So I'm hoping that students recognize that development is a complicated process and it requires a lot of stakeholders, a lot of participants all doing their part. Another thing, I, I think we've talked about this in our class, is uh, there is no silver bullet. Well, For somebody who just looks at development from outside, inwards, uh, and not, doesn't really get their feet wet, they oftentimes say, oh, it's, it's, it's corruption. Get rid of corruption, everything will be fine. Oh, it's infrastructure, just build a few bridges. Oh, it's education, like just get everybody educated. But it's much, much, much more complicated than that. So I think that's another thing the students are hopefully starting to recognize. Uh, well, another one, I think, and then again, there are certain things very specific to Bangladesh, and there are certain things that are you know, generally true about development. So one thing specific to Bangladesh, I would say, is diversifying the economy and how difficult it can be. Right. So if you look at how well the country is doing, uh, the RMG sector has done great, for, like, great work for this country. Uh, but at the same time, you look at it and you say, well, is there over a reliance on this sector? And, you know, God forbid, if at some point AI or some other competitor 
uh, does to something to the RMG sector, what do you that do? That is the next, actually, what are the worries? Right, and, and, and I think we all looked at it like every country needs something to graduate from, say, a low income status to the lower middle income or middle income status. Right. But at some point, you have to develop holistically. You cannot just depend on one sector. Right. So I, I think the hope is that the students have realized a bunch of these takeaways. They have seen some of the models in action, well, realize which ones are you know, quite applicable to the real world. And certain things are not. And also recognize context matters. Uh, you cannot just you know, have some one shoe fits all and walk into Kenya and Afghanistan and Bangladesh and you know, USA uh, and just say, oh, it's going to work. This worked here. It's going to work there. So hopefully they have, you know, they've recognized that. Uh, they've grown some empathy uh, towards folks who are not, you know, who are suffering. And hopefully they'll, we'll have a few development economists coming out of this group. That's the hope. Mm. Thanks for your good findings. Thank you. Mr. Maria, thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Stephen, in your experience, so what notable impacts have these exchange programs had on the participants? No, that's a, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, I think Dr. Buyan talked about some of those effects that you really need to get that experience. You really right. need to gain that experience. And so many of our alumni come back from that experience in the United States with also some of the values that they've been exposed to in the United States, right. like volunteerism like caring for your communities. And so many of them come back and they implement projects, they implement well, initiatives, and we support them. We support our alumni networks, we support their grants, we support their projects that they want to do. And they're working in all kinds of fields, whether it's mental health or entrepreneurship or climate change, sports diplomacy, um, professional skills development. Right. It really runs a very diverse you know, gamut. And that's, you know, exchanges is one side. The other side is Education USA, where we're really promoting study in the United States. Um, as you may have seen, uh, the number well, of Bangladeshi students has risen. Right. Uh, it's over 13,500 uh, Bangladeshi students studying in the United States because they're exposed to that world-class American education. They're exposed to these kinds of, of right. programs. They're exposed to uh, students um, and professors like Carleton College. They're at many different universities. And we really invest in this. We have advisors in three of our centers, one at the embassy, one in Chattergram, right. and one at the EMK Center in Center. downtown Gulshan. Beautiful, downtown. beautiful location. Well, we'll talk on more opportunities and uh, some exchange programs after a short break. দর্শক দেখছেন আর টিভি নিয়মিত আলোচনা অনুষ্ঠান ফোর ট্রাইট এই পর্যায়ে নিচ্ছি বিরতি ফিরছি একটু পরে সে পর্যন্ত আমাদের সাথেই থাকুন দর্শক আবারও আমন্ত্রণ ফোর ট্রাইট অনুষ্ঠানে আজকে কথা বলছিলাম যুক্তরাষ্ট্রের কার্টুন কলেজের শিক্ষার্থীদের বাংলাদেশ সফর নিয়ে ওয়েলকাম এগেইন অল অফ ইউ টু আওয়ার স্টুডিও স্টিফান how does the U.S. Embassy emphasize the significance of cultural and educational exchange strengthening bilateral relations between Bangladesh and USA? You know, cultural exchange is at the heart of the bilateral relationship. It's at the heart of the relationship between the Republic of Bangladesh and the United States. Um, well, we talked about Education USA and how we're promoting study in the United States, and those right. numbers are increasing at the grad level and undergrad level. Um, and we talked also about cultural exchanges, professional exchanges, the right. Fulbright, the YES program. But there's another piece to this, too, which is cultural preservation. Well, uh, and we really invest in that as well. Uh, we have a fund. It's called the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation. We've done 12 projects, uh, 12 projects. over about 10 years. Right. Um, we restored the Hammam at Lalbach. Well, the Laubach Fort. Lalbach it's Fort. such a beautiful place. I mean, it's a beautiful place in general, Laubach. Did you guys go there to Laubach? They haven't had Laubach. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. And that it's true, you know, it's that just a live Hamam. story. You know, it is, it is. Live and story. So many people enjoy it. It's such a beautiful space. But we had the honor of helping the Department of Ar Archaeology uh, renovate the Hammam. 
Um, we're also preserving the works of S.M. Sultan, you know, a cultural, S. M. Sultan, yeah. a cultural treasure, of course, right. you know, in Bangladesh. And the Barando, um, Barando we, Project. Exactly, in, in Rajahi. The mango capital mango of Bangladesh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my, my hometown. Really? Oh, we yeah. love Rajahi. But we really invest in those things. And so, you know, cultural preservation is very, very near and dear uh, to our hearts. It's also very near and dear to our diplomacy right. and really goes to the heart of that, that cultural exchange. That's great. Very happy to know. Thank you for your observation. Thank Very you. good observation. No, thank you. We love it. Thank you. Well, Professor Huya. Yes, please. As an academic, how do you evaluate the overall development in Bangladesh? I think it's doing better than uh, average, for sure. It's uh, developing pretty darn well compared to other South Asian nations. Uh, I mean, I don't know if everybody re realizes this, but our GDP per capita is higher than that of our neighboring country, India. That's, that's quite the achievement. Uh, could it do even better? Of course it could. But if you look at the history of development, it takes time. And I've said that earlier. If you look at Western countries, if right. you look at the US, Europe, look at the long history. The right. I mean, US got independence in 1776, so, and then we got our independence in 1971, so you have right. to give them some time. Uh, I do think, if we have better institutions, if we have better governance, if we can work with the international community uh, well, better, uh, if we can trade, if we can keep our openness to trade better, right. uh, we, can, we can even do bigger things. We can be perhaps the fifth Asian tiger. Uh, but I, I do look at Dhaka. I come here every couple of years and I see the change. Right. It's, visible, I, I, right? I, it's, it's visible. When I see the metro rail, I'm like, I, I, I'm driving by. And the expressway and, yeah, and the infrastructure. And all the infrastructure development, it's, it's crazy. One thing we will have to be very careful about, though, development needs to be decentralized. So I think Bangladesh needs to pay attention to those. And I think we are also at a juncture where our decisions of policymakers and our industrialists and just the citizens of Bangladesh is going to define where we're going to go next. I think we're doing great but we can definitely do greater. Right. Thanks for your findings. Good. Very good observation. Well, Cameron and Levy. Cameron, as students from Carleton College, what aspects of Bangladeshi culture or educational practice have impressed you the most? Well, I think going back to the English language acquisition, that has been incredibly impressive to me, talking with all of these students. I mean, I studied German for four terms at Carleton before this, and I am nowhere near the level in German um, as these students, these like maybe fifth or sixth graders are wow. in English, and it's just crazy. Um, and, and our program, our language program is very, very rigorous. It's no, it's no slouch at all, um, but these students are just so good at it. So I think that's been the most impressive part for me. Do you have any interest of Bangladeshi language? A <laughs> little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Act two, act two. Act two. <laughs> what, what about Levy? I'm trying a little bit. <laughs> Try. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, one of the most impressive things that I've noticed in Bangladesh, I think this is more focused on the educational aspect, but it's the community-based approach to everything. As Faris said, there's no like silver bullet to development, and likewise with education, there's no silver bullet every community faces different challenges, every country has different challenges. Right. Something specific that we've seen is Jago's blended learning approach right. to bring schools to rural areas where they source teachers from DACA. It's very hard to high quality teachers in rural areas. And so they've been sourcing teachers from DACA and found ways to bring very high quality education to students in rural right. areas. And that's been very admirable to me that they've found ways to address these challenges in unique and innovative ways. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Stephen. Welcome, Asher. Can you share success stories or specific instances of where participants in the U.S. Embassy exchange program have made? No, absolutely. You know, as, as, as Libby mentioned, um, education is, is very, very important. And she mentioned Jago as well. Yep. Jago actually started with a grant from the United States Embassy in 2012. Right. And look at now the, how that organization has grown. And so we invest in organizations. We invest in people. Wow. Uh, and we invest in their ideas. 
Right. Um, and so when you when you send them to the states, or they have these kinds of uh, it really life changing experiences. Right. They come back wanting to help their communities. They come back wanting to give, make a difference. They come back right. wanting to implement these initiatives. And so we've had initiatives. Um, some of our alumni have created fact checking. Right. organizations. They've worked on um, uh, water filters to clean water, for example. Um, they've done urban planning and sanitation. Right. We have another alumni doing master classes of art uh, right. for, for the communities. Uh, the Department of Archaeology is working on a digital map of all of the monuments and historical places right. in, in old Dhaka. These are what our alumni are doing today. Right. Um, because there are so many of them that are so energized and so interested in helping Bangladesh. Right. Uh, and using that knowledge and using that, that experience. And that's what makes coming to work great for us every day because this is what we work on every day. Right. This is what we invest our time in. Um, recruiting those folks and then sending them to the States. When they come back, we follow up. We right. work together, we implement projects, um, and you, you know, have organizations like JAGO that is now a really major partner, so, not so only of us, but also UNICEF and other uh, right. organizations. So you have very good examples as well. Well, because it's our alumni. When you invest in people, you just see the results of that. It is your success. success. Uh, it is their success that we love to partner in and partner with. Uh, do you find any challenge over the years? No, I mean, I, I really wouldn't say any challenges. Um, it's really about getting those folks to, to the U.S., conducting more outreach. Of course, right. you know, as Dr. You know, Bullion said, I mean, there are resource limitations, of course. Right. Would we like to do more? Yes. Would we like to do more outreach? Yes. Please, give me more. Um, but, you know, our budgets are limited. Our, you know, we have only a finite number right. of, of folks. Um, but we work very hard at it. Wonderful. Uh, and we think about it very deeply, and we try to always increase our reach. Right. This is why we have now an advisor in Chattagram well. who advises on how to study in the United States. This well. is why we have advisors at the EMK Center, why we moved it to, to Gulshan. Um, and another thing, too, is we always have opportunities right. available. So if you want to apply for any of these exchange programs or visit our, our Education USA site, Please go to our U.S. Embassy site. That is bd.usembassy.gov. We'll see you there. Um, I think it'll flash on the screen. Um, but that's really where we have a catalog of all of these opportunities. Right. They come up every, all during the year. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, we are almost in the program. Any final thought you want to share with our viewers, especially from U.S. starting from... Professor. Sure. I just want to say a few things. First, volunteerism is very important. And I think it's a dream for me, but I think it'd be nice if it was part of the Bangladeshi curriculum. Uh, there's a bunch of countries that have, you know, service in the military for two years or something like that. Why, why not have volunteering for your country for two years? Right. And, uh, you know, there's importance for military stuff, but there's also importance for non-military stuff. Uh, and I think if it was a curriculum from day one, not something that happens at a certain age, but well, grade one, grade two. That'd be, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, well, Mr. Kamal. Yeah, I just want to say, meeting everybody in Bangladesh, the people that we've been talking to and working with, um, they've all been very welcoming and accommodating, and especially the young people have all been really bright and intelligent and hardworking. And I think I just want to reiterate, we'd love to have some of those students at Carleton. Well, good. And Libby? Along you? very similar lines as Cameron, it's been awesome to represent Carleton in Bangladesh. Um, meet with all the organizations and people here, especially meeting with kids and students has been great. Seeing how hardworking and driven they are has just been inspiring and it's making me want to be a better student. So that's been great to see. And also just to see development in action as is the point of our entire program is to study these models well, and apply them and I have really seen some great things. That's great. Well, Mr. Estefan, we'll conclude our program with your remarks. So, well, thank you, please. Ashik. Thank you. Um, no, it, it was really great to meet Carleton uh, College and, and, you know, we have colleges come for college fairs all the time and exposing all of, uh, you know, we have 4,000 4,000 
colleges and universities in the United States, and that's Four a lot. Four thousand universities. Four thousand. Big town, small town, big college, small college. I mean, I it, like small town. Yeah, small town yeah. is nice. You know, small town it's is like you it, know, painting. Everyone knows your name, yeah. right? Like in the, in the small town, but people like big cities too. So there's that variety, and diversity is very important to us. Promoting that diversity. Right. Um, also stressing that diversity within our exchange uh, participants. Uh, we always have as many women going as men, for example. We have people with disabilities that have gone on our exchanges right. because diversity is strength. Right. Um, and the strength that, that has really powered, powered the, the United States. And so we are really happy to promote these exchanges. We're happy to fund them. We're happy to facilitate them. We're happy to... Um, have these kind of exchanges between uh, colleges and Bangladeshi students as well. Um, this is really what we work at. This is what we invest in. Uh, this is what's really important to us, the United States. This is part of our values uh, as well. And so it's, it's really a great honor to be able to work on this in Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank Achik. you very much, Thank you. guys. Thank you. It's a wonderful discussion. Thank you very much for being with us and sharing your thoughts. I believe it will be delighted to our students and our viewers as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dashok Gallo, Ek Dashok Ek Jukhtura Shtu Uchya Shikha Bangladesh Shikha Dishi Shangha Tien Shok Shantang Shir Bishi Bere Chhe. 2022 and 2023 Shikha Varshe Jukhtura Shtri Purte Jawa Bangladesh Shikha Dishi Shangha Shari Tero Hadere Bishi Jaya E Jabot Kalin Mudde Sharbut Chho. 2023 Open Doors Report E Toto Uti Shi Chhe. Aachke Aalo Chuna Shutra Dhori Bulte Chai Carlton College Shikati Der Moto, Jukrashtra Unnanu Pratishthani Shikati Der Shatheo, Mangalashi Shikati Ra Moto Vidimo Ayat Shujuk Pabhi. Shri Pratishthani Shashkurchi Aatke Rungustan. Aatke Shungi Thakar Janne, Dhonna Vatshwai.